And so what advice do you give to clients that find themselves in a challenging situation where, you know, the draw has just been tipped upside down, they've got to put all the pieces together, what should they do now that you've done it and obviously, you know, you help others do the same thing? Well, one of the first things I do is I help them know that there are many parts to them yeah. because when we tend to feel overwhelmed, we say, I am overwhelmed. I am depressed. I am anxious. It's a to it's a total statement. Yeah. And so say there's a part of you that is depressed. There is a part of you that is anxious. There is a part of you that's happy, a part of you that's optimistic. And so we start separating out those parts and then we go back and we find those younger parts that are really connected to that emotion. Yeah. And this is so powerful. There's been inner child work for years, but this is just such a powerful part of the practice because when I ask someone, they're, I feel depressed. How old do you feel right now? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm five. Right. So what happened at five? And then I feel so anxious. How old were you the first time you felt anxiety? Oh, I was like 17. Okay. What was going on at 17? And to know that all these individual parts are vying for attention. Like, please listen to me. I have a story to tell here. Nobody's heard me yet. And so then when we become that parent, which is challenging when we're trying to be the parent and that child that's feeling all this pain, but we start looking in, we see ourselves in a way nobody else ever could. And we all want to be seen, heard, and understood. And so when we start going back to those parts and that part says, I don't want to be in a situation like that before. And then that adult part kicks in and says, then I won't ever put you in that situation again. Now there is empowerment that starts moving. There's energy that starts moving. And even though it's kind of a back and forth that has to happen, the parts start working together. And then you can start putting those pieces back together like, okay, we're going to sort the pencils over here, the paper clips over here, and things start getting sorted. And then you get to decide what you want to get rid of, what you want to keep, what you want to repurpose. But it's those younger parts that aren't fully processed, so they hang on. And all of us can relate to this with any child we've ever known. It doesn't have to be our own. But if there is a child throwing a tantrum in the store because they want a cookie, and the parent is saying, no, you can't have that because it's going to be dinner time, it's going to ruin your appetite, the child is like not computing. This is not computing. And so when you get down to that child, though, and you go, you really want that cookie, don't you? Yeah, I really want that cookie. I know. I know those cookies are so yummy. I hear you. I really hear you. And today we're not going to have that because I want to make sure this or that. The child is more receptive now, as are all us big people. Mm -hmm. We're more receptive when we're seen, heard, and understood. Then we're more receptive to hearing maybe there is a different way to do this. And so if we don't go back and hear those younger children inside of us, they're going to fight for their survival. And that's such a, a large part of my practice. And it's amazing because, you know, I've, I work with celebrities. I work with professional athletes. I work with people from the UN. I work with doctors and lawyers and, and you name it. And I can take the biggest guy that comes in, you know, and when he connects with that younger part. It's amazing how much the physical body reacts, the emotions come because they denied it for so long. Mm. Like that's what I did. I had to deny that part because I had no idea what to do with it. Right. All I knew was pain, 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 pain. So let's just numb it out and move forward. And then right. when I go back to it though, it's like, oh my goodness, come here. And so I have three pictures of myself in my bedroom, and I have every one of my patients do this. I say, I want you to go find a picture of yourself at that age, and I want you to put it on your mirror where you will see it every day, and I want you to say, good morning, sweetheart. You're amazing. I love you. And where I used to look at these pictures of myself and cry because I was like, oh my God, she was in so much pain. Now I literally well up with tears because I'm so happy to see her, and I know I'm happy inside. So it's this coming back together in this wholeness, and then your whole inspiration opens up. It's like, we got the ground floor built, and now let's 
start climbing up that ladder and not the ladder to success like people are so driven toward, but the ladder of, of, of inner fulfillment, which success tends to come along with. 